The Power Hour continues at KFAN.com slash watch. It's powered by Quantum Fiber. Check out our YouTube page and uh, subscribe and get notifications and join us on the video side. Quantum Fiber, your world unleashed. Thanks, Zacho. Power Trip Morning Show, uh, 8 o'clock hour now. We, yeah. Hi. How you doing? Hi, everybody. Chris, how do you answer this question? Uh, when we went to break, Anna said, uh, does Sauce really talk like that? Yeah, some of that was an actual transcript of him talking. Sorry, sorry, there you go. Hold on. Sorry, go say Corey, that you said that he only had like six different phrases. I heard way more than six in that. <laughs> yeah, they're the yeah. same phrase, just done differently. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 right. He's the best. You'd love him. You will love him You'll at some him. point. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. But right now, again, you can take a, take a look at us on the old kfan.com slash watch. Right, Ben? That's right. All right, let's do uh, let's do some sports, Benjamin. Let's do, do the, fan, uh, five. fan five. Yeah, why don't we do that? It's time for Fan Five, brought to you by Builders and Remodelers. Hey, thanks, Builders Thank and Remodelers. You. All right, let's try this one. We have a new sports billionaire. According to Forbes, Magic Johnson now officially a billionaire. He's worth Good for him, one point two billion dollars. Magic Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. I love that so much because he because he leveraged his celebrity in the best way possible, and he did it pretty quietly too. Yeah, like what uh, communities that needed uh, some revitalization, right? Putting what was it Starbucks and I, I think, think movie Starbucks, theaters yeah. or something. He, yeah, he went into predominantly black neighborhoods and said, "We're going to build these businesses from the ground up," and now he's worth one point two billion dollars. Good for Magic Johnson. That's awesome, Good for man. him. All right, take your best shot at this. According to Forbes. How many billionaires are now in the world? In the world? How many billionaires on earth now that uh, Magic Johnson and others have crossed the line? I don't know. I wouldn't even know where to begin. 1,500? 1,500. Ben says 1,500. Anna, how many do you think? What would you guess? Uh, uh, I was having a hard time remembering my student body class for mm -hmm. senior year in high school. Mm -hmm. Um... I'll just go 1,800. 1,800. Zacho. 12. 12 people or 1,200? 1,200. <laughs> 12. 1,200. Okay. Max. <laughs> um, I don't know. I was going to say a, like a, a low number, but everybody else is going high. So I'll say like 20,000. 20,000? Yeah. 20,000. Wow. Okay. Uh, Chris. I already saw it, but buddy. You guys, uh, I'll set a max. Kind of close. Uh, 2,700. 2,781. Okay. That's a lot. Here's wow. here's the more guessable one though. Twenty seven hundred eighty one billionaires on planet Earth. How many people are in the one hundred billion dollar club? How many people are worth a hundred billion or more? I bet like ten. Five. I'm gonna say eighty five. Is it more than a hundred? You, you tell me. Tell us that? I'm going to say 100. Okay, Zacho? 101. 101. Okay, price is oh, right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, here it goes. Hey. Chris and Max, what did you guess again? I said five. I said 10. You guys are close. Yep. 14. Wow. There are 14 people, 100 billion or more. Mm. Yeah, that's a lot of money, man. Does it have a list of who they are? Uh, I'm, Forbes does somewhere. I don't have yeah, it in front that, of me. But that's now. not in front of you. Okay. No. I think they said Bezos is currently third. I think Elon's second or fourth. I don't know. Hmm. Some. I think the French dude is uh, first now. Some dude I... I a Frenchman. Know. A French guy? Oh, oh, awesome. A Frenchman. Yeah. 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 Hang on, it is. Uh, I, got a, I got a list right here. A bunch of people we wouldn't really know. Steve Ballmer, Bill yeah. Gates, uh, Warren Buffet. <laughs> right. Names we're not familiar with, those three. I love you. No, I meant the people that I didn't name. Oh, got it. Who's the front? Do you have the guy that's on top? Uh, let me scroll down. I Jeff Bezos yesterday. is three. Elon Musk is two. Bernard Arnault. Yeah, he's first. Is number one. Two, he, is a fr he is a Frenchman. Two something. Oh, the, what does he do? Two? What does he own? This what has he created? LVMH. A luxury I conglomerate. Oh. Which owns Louis Vuitton, Christian Dior, oh, and this might even be the biggest one these days, Sephora. <laughs> mm. Oh, man. The kids are crazy about Sephora. Sephora. I know the ins and My outs of that is, store, man. She's nuts for it. She's 10. Yeah, same. Loves Loves, loves Sephora. I don't even know how my daughter knows about all this stuff. She knows everything about all the skin care, all, all the social lotions. Media. It's yeah. TikTok. It's TikTok. Crazy. All over TikTok. Yep. Yep. Anyway, 14, Take 100 billionaires. Wow. 
Ain't so bad. Yeah. Uh, the Wolves beat the Raptors 133-85. to mm-hmm. It's just an absolute ass-kicking. Uh, 53rd win of the year for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Even better, OKC got blown out by Boston, 135-100. So, uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder now a game behind the Wolves in Denver. The Wolves in Denver tied atop the Western Conference. And the Wolves have the tiebreaker, so they are the number one seed in the Western mm-hmm. Conference as of this very moment. And what do we got? Six games left? Something like I think that. it's six to go. Playing a bunch of, uh, a couple of hungry teams here down the stretch. So a couple of games against the Suns. Got a big one against the Nuggets next Wednesday. Uh, Lakers here on Sunday. We'll go into L.A. on Sunday. And then the Wizards and the Hawks, who are no good. So yeah. it'll be interesting down the stretch. Go for women into the uh, women's NIT final after beating Troy 74-69. Battle had nice. 18 points. And St. Louis beat Vermont. So the championship game is Saturday at 2 o'clock. St. Louis versus the Gopher women. Let's go. And where's this at? Is I'm that, not sure. Is that the one that's in Cleveland? No, that's the oh, actual that's Final actual Four. One. I don't know where this one is. Right. Hmm. I don't, well, how, did, how does that... I mean, is, it, is there a home game? Well, that's what the WNIT? I, yeah, that's I why... I doubt there's a neutral site, but who knows? Maybe there is. I didn't know if we were hosting before I don't know. the top seed. Women's basketball? Not sure. Not sure. Speaking, anyway, of good, good luck. Yeah, speaking of women's basketball, uh, LSU's Angel Reese is declaring for the WNBA draft. She's 21. Of course, lost to Iowa and Caitlin Clark on Monday. The only thing that's uh, interesting about this, I, th- I think, is is uh, the Lynx select seven. Mm-hmm. And that's about where she's projected to go. Oh, Lord. Let's go. Somewhere Let's in go. that back half of the top ten. So we might see a uh, an Angel Reese Lynx collaboration here at some point. So she's one of the most noteworthy names in women's college basketball. And that's about where the Lynx are going to be picking. Zach, your hands up. Location to be announced. To be announced for the championship game. <laughs> okay. It is Saturday. That's great. That's great for ticket sales. <laughs> so it's got to be one of the two spots, right? Wouldn't it almost have to be a home game for one of the two? How does that work? I could. Could I see it happening here? <laughs> All, All right. right. Maybe. Here he goes. Okay. Uh, the Wild host Colorado tonight at 7 o'clock. They, uh, they have eight games to go, five of them on the road. But uh, bad news last night because the Kings, the team that they are chasing, beat the Seattle Kraken 5-2. to two, So... Now eight points behind the Kings. Yeah, it's a tough spot. Uh, the Kings have a much easier schedule the rest of the way, but who knows? It's it's uh, a team that deserves better. Hopefully you don't they, sound real they, confident, man. Mm-mm. Yeah, again, it's just I mean, just look it's at the numbers. Over. Look at the numbers. The numbers game. It's not great, but uh, you know they 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 won a game. They almost beat the Golden Knights on Saturday. Um, so they're playing really really well. They've won seven one and. Two in the last ten, mm. so they're one of the hotter teams. They just uh, dug themselves too big of a hole early on. So, Anna, you are uh, passionate about hockey, mm-hmm. and you're covering a lot of college hockey. Yeah. How much do you pay attention to the NHL? Honestly, during hockey season, I mostly just dial into college mm-hmm. hockey, and now it's kind of I'm kind of shifting back over into professional hockey. It's but a lot. It is, and we're not done with college season yet yeah. either. It's Frozen Four next weekend. Yeah, do you have a favorite in that? I have a least favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the least Denver? favorite? Denver. Oh, yeah. Denver. Everybody hates Denver. Why? Even is though they're really... in the NCHC. It's so weird. Like you would think you want to root for your conference I opponents know. in there, and you know, being the only uh, conference NCHC team there. But but it's like when you're going hatred, against yeah. them all season long, yeah. then it's kind of like hard to it's mm-hmm. it's hard to root for them when it comes to those final teams. And they're and nine they time. Your hearts. Yeah, they're nine time national champions. Yeah. They don't let us forget about that. I don't know. That's and that, that overtime game was it, it was the pioneers right yeah. that yeah I still I, I thought they were going to reverse that goal <sighs> yeah you know stuff happens but <laughs> can't do anything about it good ben, luck to the pioneers and who do you like on Saturday we're uh, we're down to the final four Purdue is the number one seed they are hosting not hosting what am I talking about they are uh, facing off against number eleven North Carolina State NC State is a uh, nine point dog. Then in the other game, UConn is blowing everybody out. They're the uh, number one overall seed. They take on number four Alabama, and UConn is an eleven and a half point favorite on DraftKings. I think I think the favorites win win both of those. I think it's going to be a UConn Purdue final. And do you think Zach Eady can give them enough to give UConn a run, or is this UConn's to lose? I think it's U- UConn's to so lose. So do I. Yeah, they're just yeah. so dumb. They've been so dominant. Yeah, what is it? Ten straight wins of thirteen points or more. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like something every, like that. Every matchup in the that's, tournament. That's the one thing about 
the tournament that everybody you know tries to pick apart and tries to analyze, like, well, this matchup actually, this team might be a higher seed, but the matchup is not great or whatever. And UConn's is blown past everybody, whether they're they're big man, you know, dominant, or they've got a great front court. It doesn't it doesn't matter who they're playing. They just they crush everybody. Uh, JG live from the Final Four today and hey. tomorrow. Radio okay. Row, oh, Justin yeah. Guard again. And it's been a long time since I uh, did that trip with them. Mm-hmm. What three, four, five times? Gerdy and I flew to Houston. We did Atlanta. We had uh, so many fun experiences on Radio Row. Luminaries like uh, Evander Holyfield selling barbecue sauce, and he barely knew that it was his face on the bottle. Uh, <laughs> great uh, interviews like Jared Fogel from Subway, who seemed very nice. You, you, you got to quit <laughs> saying that. You gotta, yeah, I don't know yeah, why you. Yeah, 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 I said yeah. seemed yeah. past tense. Yeah, that's, that he seemed at the time. You got to stop wearing that like a badge of honor. In, in a lot of ways, it's a shot at me. I'm a bad judge of character. Seemed like a good dude. I was wrong. Yeah, <laughs> seemed very nice. It's okay. I am too. Obviously, you're in here. <laughs> Don't fall for Fogel. I almost did. Well, uh, anyway, JG <laughs> live today and tomorrow from the Final Four. Is he gonna have? Uh, is he gonna have P Diddy on? And uh, <laughs> you know, all the all. all. Yeah. yeah, great idea. Yeah, great idea. <laughs> he should have. He yes, should yes. have him on. Yeah. He is uh, broadcasting uh, from Epstein Island today, uh, three yep. to six thirty. Well, that's a, that's wow. that's probably not good either. <laughs> Duh. Should we do headlines when we get back? I think we probably should. All right, more of the power trip. Morning, Joe. I, have to, I think so, yeah. <laughs> I said past tense. I didn't say he seems like a nice guy. He seemed. <laughs> seemed past tense, Zach. Context matters. Power trip morning, Joe, the fan. The fan. Hey, the 21. Do I like. I'm. Ugh. My what in the hell just happened? Hang on, let's, it's all right. That's I, okay. Start Three, again. Two. I, I have a, yeah, I have the perfect button for that. Hang on a second, Zacho. Um, Start over and speak differently. The Electric Rock Duo 21 Pilots are headed back to Minnesota. Catch them October 12th as they bring the Clancy World Tour to Target Center. Tickets go on sale tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. For more info, head over to KFN.com. Make the keyword calendar. There you go. Watch God, more. that was hot nonsense. It was, it was really yeah, hot, no, That's though. how you don't do it. <laughs> so you're, you're, Noted. Yeah, yeah. Right. Again, uh, uh, Anna Banning is our guest. She's in studio. She's uh, learning some good and bad uh, things. Um, ben, as uh, I can tell over there, taking her under his wing, uh, telling her how to do things. Yeah. Uh, no? Okay, yep. great. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Uh, th- this segment, we do something called headlines, where we only read the headlines. Yeah, no context. No context. No you information. Know, when, uh, when maybe your friends do this, they'll read a headline on Twitter and then never read the story, but then they uh, go to a party and act like they're an expert on it. All the time. Yeah. That's what we do. We just read the headlines and then just make uh, super grandiose, like, blanket statements and right. act yeah. like we know what we're talking about. Yeah. Now it's time for Headlines. All right, please. Please, may I do the first one? Sure. It's brought to you by our friends at Wolf River Electric. You can go solar with Wolf River Electric. Go get those panels. Save some money. Do the whole bit. They'll hey walk you through it. Wolf River Electric. Hey, Ben. Yeah. It's National Blank Day. Do you know what National Day it is? You don't. I'm just going to tell you. No, I don't. It's National Burrito Day. Yes. Yes. National Burrito yeah. Day. And there are deals to be had. It it's a me. BOGO at Chipotle and Taco Bell. What? Need it delivered? DoorDash, Grubhub, and Uber Eats offering Burrito Day delivery deals. Ooh. Just about every Mexican restaurant will have a burrito offering today. Oh. And here's what you oh. need to know. Tell me. Burrito means little donkey. It's care. a tortilla <laughs> stuffed with good things, and we've been eating them since the 1900s. No reason to stop now. I'm Bree Tennis. That's Thank why you, Bree. Thanks, Bree. Wow. Zach, your hand was up. <laughs> so I've been meaning to t- tell you about this, or I, I guess ask you about it. You go to St. Cloud a lot. Have you been to Bravo Burrito? Do you think I haven't? Okay. Just Holy make, balls. Just making sure, because I oh. went with my guy, Zach Chapman, up there, and he introduced it to me. Oh, I was like, Hold. I know Zach. Yes. Oh. He is, uh, he's awesome. So and I've never Bravo. had Bravo burrito. Oh my. You have not. Okay. No. Yeah, we have, we have Bravo before, uh, before the show one time a week. Is that, that what you say when you're leaving the place? Bravo. 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 Bravo burrito. I'm sorry for what I did to your bathroom. <laughs> and of course, Bravo burrito translates to well done, little donkey. That's right. <laughs> well done. <laughs> little donkey. Not the first time Man, I've heard that. Oh. Ah. God, that was hot nonsense. Hot nonsense. All right, there, okay, man. Right. National burrito day. Mmm. 
Uh, Conan O'Brien, the GOAT. Uh, Conan O'Brien is going to appear on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. It'll be the first time he's been on The Tonight Show since his stint ended 14 years ago. Wow. Ooh. I mean, no no hard feelings with Fallon, right? It was all he yeah. hated Jay Leno and was bitter about uh, NBC and Jay Leno. So he'll be back for the first time. He's promoting his new travel show, which uh, premieres on April 18th on uh, Max, on HBO Max. Me? Oh. Can't wait. He, uh, he visits uh, Norway, Thailand, Argentina, and Ireland. Interesting. It, it, it's, what was the other show that he had? Conan O'Brien. Didn't he do another travel show? Yeah, yeah he did. And it was awesome. It was basically his, it was on his actual TBS show, but he would just do kind of specials. He would go around the oh, world right. and film it. Must and, go. Yeah. Yeah, it Co- was that's it. Conan Without Borders. Oh, that's right. It's oh. awesome. It's hmm. everything I love about Conan. I know it's edited to make it look like everything is ad-libbed, and it is ad-libbed, but he, they're taking the best of the best. Yeah. But if you even, because uh, I worship the dude, if you're anywhere even remotely a fan of Conan, his travel shows are Awesome. I can't wait for this one. I, I this forgot. Be the, epic. the first one started when he went to Cuba back in 2015. Wow. Can't wait. Conan Without Borders. Hmm. It's He's gonna be great sweet. on his feet, man. Love that guy. He's very, very, very quick. I hope he writes a book someday. I'd love to know more about his time at Saturday Night Live. Yeah, he, he, I feel like he's upping the amount of how much he's been talking about yes. that on his podcast. He seems to be bringing up his writing days a lot more. I don't know if that's um, consciously or subconsciously, but, uh, man, with Kristen Wiig, he yes. talked a ton yeah. about the, the writing uh, um, process on SNL. Great po- a great podcast. That was a great really one. Was, speaking, yeah. of, speaking of which, Chris, uh, I don't know if you saw the latest episode of Palm Royale, but it actually got better. Okay, good, good. In this latest episode, I believe. I was busy watching Vanderpump last night, <laughs> uh, so I haven't seen another episode yet, but I am uh, looking forward to getting Yeah, I think I feel like it took a little bit of a step forward Ooh. in a better direction. Fantastic. Well, good. Yeah. Good. That's good to know. That's good to know. Uh, Adam Sandler keeps talking about the development of Happy Gilmore 2 yeah! and how we've lost a lot of people that were in Happy Gilmore 1 since it came out, like Bob Barker. We lost Carl Weathers uh, just this week. Joe Flaherty, the guy that plays the... Uh, the, the guy who goes um, to the, the steakhouse. Yeah, the, yeah, the assassin jackass. almost, right. The guy yeah, that yeah. runs yeah. over Happy mm-hmm. Gilmore with the car. Yeah, yeah, jackass. Yeah, jackass. Yeah, that's yep. right, so right, right. He, uh, he said they were looking to, to find ways to honor all of those pe- uh, people. And one of the ways is he's thinking about having a cameo by Drew Carey, who is the current host of The Price oh, is Right, see, to honor sense. the I fact like that, that Bob Barker, of course, was mm-hmm. in it the first time. I'm telling you, man, I can't get it out of my head. And, and talking about Conan, the podcast. I feel like Adam just sits around all day going, damn it, I got to make another movie. What am I going to do today? I mean, he's, he's got that deal with Netflix. He has to make a certain amount of movies. It seems like the worst thing ever. It's yeah. a lot of money. A lot of pressure, though. A, lot, a lot, of lot of pressure just to do it. And you can't do good things if you're scratching to get something done. You no. Know? I, and- <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's what I'm saying. The one good thing that he's done in recent memory was Uncut Gems, and that had nothing to do with his Netflix deal. That was so good. That sure. was a good movie, man. That was good. Still not going to watch it, Chris? No. Too close to home? Yeah, I've seen I've seen snippets of it, and I had to turn it off. And it's, yeah, uh, it's, it's really like, good. It's like Such watching a, a story in my life. A, uh, a 68-year-old <laughs> woman in the UK passed away from breast cancer recently. Uh-huh. Her uh, funeral was last month. Okay. Uh, at her funeral, somebody dressed as the Grim Reaper showed up and pointed at people saying, You're next. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I thought the first part was the headline. I was no, like, is that here's it? the catch, though. What? The woman's dying wish was to have a friend show up at her funeral, dress as the Reaper, and point at her friends okay, and say, like, oh, like, okay, that's, that's, just, like, that's, yeah. that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That, that's what she wanted. That's terrifying. So it's so much better, though, if she doesn't tell almost anyone yeah, that, right? Because right? Like, right, right. if everybody knows, oh, you know, uh, you know. Sally wanted uh, to have the Grim Reaper here. That's if somebody walked in because all of you reacted like, "What? That's so inappropriate." She died of breast cancer. So much better if it's a prank on everybody except for the one person that executed that prank and then said, "That's that was she wanted." This. Yeah, so true. So Get true. everybody uncomfortable and then tell yeah. them that that's yeah. what she wanted. Sauce has it written in his will that I have to show up and go. The juice is loose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, thank nailed you, Zacho. Got it. Zach. Nice job. Uh, here's something the Power Trip Morning Show might uh, need to use on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Hmm. One of the most popular slang terms in the 1800s was, my name is Haynes. And that's what you would say if you wanted to quickly end a conversation or leave a room. 
<laughs> you just go, <laughs> my name is Haynes, and just dip out. I love and that. just mic drop awesome. and walk out. I guess you. I've got that, 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 you. I guess. It, look, I'm not. I'm just the messenger. One of the most popular slang terms in the 1800s was "My name is Haynes," which you would say if you wanted to quickly end a conversation or leave a room. My God! Wow. So it's like the 1800s version of pulling a hockey. Yeah. That's right. I yeah, have why, to use that. Why wouldn't you just if you if you verbally have to say something to leave the conversation, just say goodbye or goodbye. My name is Haynes. Yeah. Or, like, I'm, or I'm this out. is boring. I'm leaving. Yeah. <laughs> You're boring me. I'm leaving. I My kinda, name is Haynes. I like I like that it's so random. I, I who why knows Haynes? what the Haynes reference is, right? H A I N E S. But so just do like what everybody underwear. else does. Like I gotta all use the restroom. I gotta go. Use the restroom. And never come back. But can you imagine if it's... So anyway, I was getting lunch with Alan Page. And you're like, my name is Haynes. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? It's going to be fun. You hear the bongos as well? Right. Um, My name is Haynes. Supposedly uh, supposedly, uh, originated in the mid-19th century uh, after an encounter between Thomas Jefferson and a man named Haynes. The story of this first encounter first appeared in the weekly Picayune. Uh, published in New Orleans in uh, February 17th of 1840. has been retold a number of uh, other newspapers. But, uh, yeah, it's a very long story. Hmm. But it did... Uh, this All right, so there the was an actual thing. man named Haynes. There was Haynes. a guy named Haynes. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Hmm. Good history we should, lesson. We should yeah. adopt that somehow. You yeah, know? Uh, for sure. Like, at any point in the next 20 minutes, if I bore you with one of these headlines, just say, well, Ben, in six minutes, you're going to have to leave. So just mid-sentence, just say, my name is Haynes, and just walk out. Just yeah. put a sign on the door for all the new guests, the first-timers. <laughs> if you need an out, well, say this. Here's our code word. There's, yeah. I think Haynes. A couple days a week, this is going to get used. <laughs> uh, again, this is just a headline. Don't kill the messenger. I don't have any uh, details. But uh, apparently, Tool's next album will not take as long to come out as the last one, which I think was almost a decade, right? Wasn't it 10 or 12 years in between albums? So I don't know if that means they have one in the works and it's soon, but it just says the next album is uh, apparently not going to take as long. Haynes! <laughs> my name is Haynes. Can I ask a question? Go on. Go Who is Tools? Oh, man. Oh, Tool, my God. Singular. Tools? I well, wish we could play Tool. Not, this, but, uh, what kind yeah. of music do you like? Anna, just in general? Country. You would okay. hate Tool. <laughs> it's like hard rock. Hard rock, but That's they are, yeah. I mean, they're like a rock and roll Hall of Fame worthy well, not level. I like, I like rock and roll. Okay, but Tool would, like, they but sell out the Target Center. They're a huge maybe. deal. See, I think, I think rock and roll is, is a misleading genre. They're prog rock. That's their technical title. Prog like, rock? Prog rock, yeah. Like Fraggle Rock? Yeah, Wikipedia says alternative metal, art rock, post metal, progressive metal, and progressive yeah. rock. Yeah, so they do it yes. all. Yeah. yeah, I would. So, and I would put them more in the. They're in more the metal category than they are rock. Yeah, okay. but they are. Um, they are a band's band. Like musicians worship their craft. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like other bands are like they bow down to the uh, brilliance of Tool. Mm-hmm. Um. Not the songwriting, like just the way that well, they... Well, both, but like even songs that the masses don't love, the rest, like Chris can attest to this, like musicians seem to just think that they're on a different level. Yeah, right. Yeah, as as musicians. Yeah, as musicians. <laughs> they're just they're just better than everybody else. They they think outside the box. They just are, are very strange. But they also have about 12 or 13 just bangers. Mm. Don't Especially shake that. your head, Zach. Uh, if you poop on Survivor in a group, they film you. Say that again. <laughs> if you poop on Survivor in a yeah. group, though, in a group. So part of the apparently a part of the deal is if you if you go to the bathroom by yourself, though they will give you privacy. But because there's a chance you could talk strategy if you go in groups, they tell you if you go to the bathroom in a group, we are still going to keep filming. So I who, guess there's a does that? there's a Outside strategy about. <laughs> Listen, I like what I like. <laughs> who does group poop? <laughs> Do they have, like, actual bathrooms to use? That's a great question. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know about that either. That's funny. My 10-year-old asked that when we were watching Survivor last week. She goes, do they have, like, a porta potty or where do they go? I go, good question. Don't know. Like, hmm. If it's true Survivor, no. I would. You just got to go where you go. I don't know. They just know. know not to do it in a group. Hmm. Unless, Unless they, they want, want it get, on camera. They want to get filmed. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can we go back to uh, um, my name is Haynes real quick? Of course. All right. I read the whole story. Mm-hmm. While you guys were talking nonsense about poop. <laughs> <laughs> So Thomas Jefferson's going to his house one day, and he's riding along beside this dude, and they strike up a conversation. They're both riding horses. So I'm riding along, and I'm riding along. I'm riding along, I'm riding along. (laughs) And uh, 
this guy uh, um, mentions so how much he hates Thomas Jefferson. He has no idea it's Thomas Jefferson. Oh, he's man. Him. And uh, love that already. Just ripping him on everything. And so they, they pull up in front of, uh, uh, they're just riding by, and it's Thomas Jefferson's house. They get close to Thomas Jefferson's house, and Thomas Jefferson's like, hey, you want to come in my house, have a drink? And he never said who he was, right? Mm-hmm. And the guy says, oh, well, sure, I, I guess I should ask, who are you? And he goes, I'm Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> and the guy looks at him, and he goes, President Thomas Jefferson? I mean, he just ripped it ripped him to shreds for like a half hour. And he goes, yes, Thomas, President Thomas Jefferson. And Haynes goes, well, my name is Haynes, and spurred his horse and took off. <laughs> they just left. That's it. <laughs> so that's why they say my name All is right, Haynes. All right, so if you I just like want to quickly yeah. leave, you just say my here. name is Haynes. My name is Haynes. All Who right. documents this stuff? Like, how did they figure that out? Must Thomas have been Jefferson. Jefferson. I would say yeah, Jefferson must have told that, that story. Like yeah, he probably sure. tweeted it or something. It yeah, for did. sure. Yeah, it probably did. Um... Cops in Cleveland have been trying to track down a guy who pulled a gun on a Burger King worker because he was told that his breakfast order was eight bucks, but the uh, the customer thought it was supposed to be about eleven. Huh. Mm-hmm. So he was mad because it was yes. How like, me, I'm poor. The uh, Burger King person said uh, your order is eight bucks, and he's like, no, it should be more like eleven. And the argument pissed him off and pulled a gun on the drive-through worker. Huh. I hope you die. Thought it should be $11. Like Thought the guy had it wrong. Hmm. Well, you know, as a matter of principle, guys, I guess he's probably right. Yeah. He said the guy threatened to kill him also used a racial slur. Oh. Was he dressed as the Grim Reaper? I don't think so. <laughs> See, now that's a great callback right there. That's you a good callback. See, yeah, you, you understand broadcasting. That was a callback. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they arrested Batman, by the way. Did you see that? A 42-year-old guy in Michigan named Jamal Batman was arrested for DUI last weekend. Oh, oh. The, hi, Batman. The trooper saw an open bottle of tequila inside the vehicle. So the police said, quote, after Batman was taken out of the patrol vehicle at the jail, uh, troopers located a small plastic baggie containing a white powdery substance oh. and tested positive for cocaine where Batman had been seated. So Batman does coke. <laughs> See, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, he's, he's under a lot of pressure. Not a lot more childhood. sense. Yeah, he's at out at night fighting crime. For sure. Doing all stuff. And then during the day, he's this business guy that's like super savvy. Like, how does he do it all? Yeah. I'm not trying to give Batman an out, but doesn't the Batmobile drive itself? I mean, doesn't he essentially have an automated vehicle? Can he throw yeah. a couple back and just let the Batmobile do the thing? Stack your Was hands up. Was the Batmobile impounded? And how much do you, does it cost to get it out of there? Why do you want it? Oh. Yeah. I thought you wanted to drive the planter's nutmobile. I mean, you can do two things at once. Me so horny. How do you drive two cars at once? Uh, Bard. Exactly. Oh, see, relax. Just hope one of them's on a stick shift. Uh, I heard you hang around the impound lot a lot. <laughs> there is yet another <laughs> Matrix movie in the works. This yes. would be the fifth Matrix movie. The fourth one was movie. really good. I'm all for that. Another Nobody? one. Anybody? Me? With no? Keanu? Yes. I read it yesterday. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Has he been in every sequel? Yes. Mm-hmm. Has he really? Yeah. Yep, yep. When did the first one come out? 99. It was 99. That's cool. And it was amazing. Holds up. First Real one holds good. up. Have you seen it? I haven't. Oh, it's awesome. Uh, it was a game changer. I'm going to give oh, you, you a list of things. You're on probation, no. Anna. Yeah, it's probably worth it. It's a, it's first a cultural one holds thing. Up. you got to watch this. It holds up. Yeah. I'm going to give you a list of things that you need to see. I know. Here. I feel like I need to watch more movies. Yeah, yeah. You do. You There's do. a movie called Unless Top Secret that we brought up on Monday <laughs> yeah. that you have to watch. Top Secret's a great one. Top You're a sports Secret. fan, right? Have you seen the uh, classic film Ladybugs? No. With Jonathan Brandis and Rodney Dangerfield. I haven't. It don't, won four don't, Academy Awards. Don't fall into his trap. It, it was also... My name is Haynes. <laughs> there he goes. There goes Ben Lee. You can see him on Twin see Cities Live weekdays, 3 to 4.30 on Channel 5. Yeah, he just leaves Hi, abruptly whenever he needs to leave. Yeah. Yep. There he goes. Anna. Hi, Ben. Uh, what do you think of Ben? Be honest. Now that he's gone, tell us the truth. My name is Haynes. Yeah, <laughs> I knew it. Jeez. Well played. Yep, I'm with you. Another call back. Just yep. kidding. <laughs> uh, Air France pilots. Hey, I wonder if Sauce is flying Air France. Uh, Air France. Well, he did take a, a, a flying lesson. You never once. know. He did. He flew a plane. Air France pilots are threatening to strike over new government rules that would ban striking. What? Hmm. Okay. Anybody? How do you strike a strike? Well, that was a hell of a sentence. How do you strike a strike? You, is that a double strike? Is that, then you just work, right? See, it's profound. It's like you're currently in the matrix right now trying to figure out what's real and what's yeah. not. Are we going bowling? <sighs> oh, that does sound strike? fun. Oh, I do yeah. like bowling. I, like, I, like I love bowling. bowling. Yeah, I like to bowl. I'm good yeah. at it. I think uh, I could be a pro. Yep, that's and insane. I think I could be a pro bowler. 
I've never seen you in the lanes. Yeah, no. just look at me yeah, like just, as a person. Just stereotype him. Look at him and yeah. say, does that look like a pro bowler? Somebody that yeah. could average like 240. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. See? I'm halfway there then. Oh. <laughs> I got the look. And I get used to being wrong. What does a, what does a, bowl, what's a bowler supposed to look like? Me. <laughs> pretty much like yeah, Chris, honestly. Yeah, a little, Chris, little, little but chubby. a little more driven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all. A lot more, <laughs> actually, yeah. Uh, yeah. A new study says that couples who drink together live longer. Yeah! <laughs> Where did this study come from? I don't know, but Busey is her. pumped about it. Yeah, he likes it. Mm. Great point. Oh, uh, Dan Brera agrees. Speaking of this, uh, the most recent world's oldest man, who was just uh, 114 before he recently passed away, Chalked up his longevity to hard work, going to bed early, and drinking a shot of booze every day. Hey, it's Mark Rosen. My dad actually does that. A shot? Or a just sh- has a drink every day? Okay, a swig of whiskey. Okay, that's oh, a shot. He's doing a swig? That's how his he does grandpa was, wow. a, um, was a pharmacist, and apparently he lived a long life, and I don't know, my dad's been doing it, and he's alive. <laughs> There you go. Well, a I mean, swig of whiskey every night. Just like a really small one. Like when he's. But he keeps it in hour, the freezer. But like an hour yeah. before bed or. No, like or right when before. He's into he bed, takes, it's, no, no. He takes a shower. Then you hear him go into the kitchen and just pulls out the freezer and does it. So yeah. he's, a it ni- he's a night shower. Ben Lieber would like that because Ben thinks that's the way to go. He's a night shower. Yes. Then he does his routine, brushes his teeth, all that stuff. Then a swig or a swig and then brushes his teeth and go to bed. That's actually you, a good question. I'm, I'm assuming he brushes his teeth after. I would hmm. think you do the swig yeah. first. Yeah, yeah. you got to swig it first. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to... So you must do shower, swig, then brush. Man. <laughs> then bed. Any chance that it's more than just a swig? Like, you only see the first swig, and 12 hours later, I, gu- I guess you got to ask upside him. down. Yeah. It, it sounds like he's hiding a significant drinking problem. It does from seem you. like you might want to check He's actually he's doing it this not week. a big drinker. Okay, that's no, yeah. just nightly before all. bed by himself. Just that. <laughs> Apparently, it's good for your health. I don't sure, know. Sure. Yep. Yep. I'm Absolutely. not going to test it. Yeah. Uh, when, when is the the window of Gen Z from when to when? Could you look it up quickly, Zacho? Gen Z is what? Uh, late '90s, early 2000s to mid 2010s. Okay, so basically Tommy Olson. Yeah. Late '90s. That's right. Because he's what '96. No, he's 94? older than he 94? Hey, he uh, must be 94. He just turned 30. He's, yeah. Uh, so Gen Z, 60% of Gen Zers. Well, you're a Gen Zer. Is that correct, right? You said yeah. you're old. 2003. 2000, okay, Jeez, so this is you, Anna. Younger than my daughter. That's Check this out. 60% of your generation, Gen Z. 60% of Gen Zers believe that traditional table manners, like having your elbows on the table, are no longer relevant. Do you put your elbows on the table when you're eating? I mean, I don't think about it, so I'm assuming I do. I yeah. guess that's, I just thought about that in my own head, and that's exactly what I thought, too. I'm like, I wonder if I do that. I, I'm never yeah. consciously thinking about it. I'm not even close to Gen Z, but. Yeah, it's not like I'm setting it down. I'm like, oh, I gotta, gotta keep the elbows off. That was huge, though, when we were growing up, right, Chris? Elbows off the table, yeah, napkin, the whole that. bit. Yep. Now it's more like cell phones, like keep your cell phones away from the dinner table. Jeez Louise, man. Focus. Yeah. Yeah. Can't even imagine. I can't imagine having uh, living in, in a time when you had a cell phone in school. Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine. Go I mean, I can. <laughs> yeah, right. You can, of course, because you're still in school. How do they stay focused? No wonder they all have ADHD. Yeah. That's a good question. And no work ethic. I was listening to this podcast. Right I listened to this podcast yesterday about teachers. Uh, the the daily something or other. I forget what it's called. I like um, it does a news story every day. It was talking to, about kids who miss a chronic amount of school these days. Do you know about this, Corey? Do you, did you have any idea that, like, since the pandemic, kids are missing so many days of school, like, because I guess their parents and they realized after the pandemic they didn't need to go every day or so? I, I have no idea, but it's I can like, sense a, that. A, a, right? It's like <laughs> I've a, seen a, that a little bit with my little one. Terrible yeah. thing, man. Like, yeah. And and people taking vacations during the school year and and you know just so willy nilly. I'm I'm on that team though, a hundred percent, especially when they're young, like. Life experience versus a week of school, especially if you're making up the work, right? If you're keeping up with whatever homework you had, uh, when we schedule uh, vacations. That's, by the way, that's the rub. What is the rub? People keeping up with the homework they were supposed to do. And they don't? They don't. Okay. Yeah. I, I definitely tell my girls, when we go on trips, you you are obviously going to tell your teachers ahead of time. You're going to let them know. You're going to make sure you catch, catch up and keep up. And if it requires homework on the plane or at the hotel, you got to do it. But I just don't ever want to 
not give them that experience because the scheduling doesn't work out. I think they're going to learn more of seeing the world than five days in school. Yeah. You know, I, I see what you say. I see an angle there, but I, I also, you know, like this podcast was pointing out, like a kid misses six days of school and comes back and is six days behind everybody else. And the teacher has to slow down the lesson plan in order to catch the other kid back up. So everybody gets slowed down. And if you have 15 kids in a class of 30 doing mm-hmm. that, it throws mm-hmm. off the entire school year. Sure. Pretty so, crazy. So basically since COVID, parents have become more lenient. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Sure. Yep. And kids have become more lazy. <laughs> well, maybe. Or just maybe. know that there's other ways to do it. It could do it virtually or don't make it up. I don't know. The virtual thing is huge. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Plus, you know, my youngest is 10. She's at the point now where school is starting to get boring for her. <laughs> it was fun for a while. And now it's like, God, this is a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. If you stopped going to school when it was boring, <laughs> nobody would go to college. <laughs> Am I right, Anna? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a whole bunch of kids that probably shouldn't go to college, right? We got to tear that system down, too. Mm, those are the ones. Yeah. Those are the ones that get weeded out freshman year. Yeah. After spending tens of thousands of dollars that yeah. they now have to pay <laughs> to realize that it wasn't yeah. for them anyway. Well, they go to a trade school or something and make way more money than they would have if they would have kept with the degree. Yep. Can I take True. over for a second? I yeah. got two things I, I want to get I got to. last one. Can okay, I just do ahead. one yeah. last one yeah, just because it. this is Easter week? Get it. A 35-year-old guy in Florida. Shocking. I know that guy. Struck a Walgreens manager with a Bible on Easter because she was being rude while he was trying to buy headphones. He's just trying to spread the word. You know, I get it. So he's at he's at Walgreens trying to buy headphones on Easter as one tends to yeah. do, yeah. And didn't like the uh, the manager's attitude, so struck a Walgreens manager with a Bible on Easter. Yeah, power of Christ compelled him. <laughs> wow, take it away. Thank you, <clears throat> Julia Garner is going to play the Silver Surfer in the Fantastic Four movie. Wait a minute. Yeah. Gonna be sweet. The How gal cool from Ozark, that? yeah, is gonna be Ruthie. the silver surfer. Gonna be the silver surfer. That's right. Wow. I love that for her. That's gonna She's be so, so good. At, please, Anna, are we gonna be friends? I have seen the oh, Fantastic Four. No, no, no. no. Seen Ozark. What about Ozark? I I have seen a couple episodes of Ozark. I never finished it, and I liked it. Okay, Worth good. It. All right, good. All right, that's. I still close. never seen it. I gotta watch it all the way through. Oh, but I've did seen. You guys stop. Like, it's one of the most addicting shows I've ever... Now you've made Zach angry, Max. I'm sorry, Zach. Look, sorry. See what you've done. Zach, oh, Figure it out, will Max. you forgive me, man? Yeah. By the way, if you want to have... Uh, work it out? If you want to hear Mark Rosen's opinion on the female Silver Surfer, turn in, uh, tune in uh, Tuesday at yeah. the 7.30 yeah, when if you we tell hear him, him the um, news. If you want to hear him as... Um, <clears throat> excuse me. If you want to hear him as Zed in Pulp Fiction, listen right now. You want that gun, don't you, Zed? I do. Go ahead and pick it up. Here, give it to me. <laughs> It's hard. Step aside, what? That was his butt. <laughs> Jeez. Gargling. Okay. Gargling. No, man. I'm pretty fucking far from okay. Oh, please. You're benefiting from this. Yeah. Mark Rosen in the movies. I don't know how he didn't get that role. I don't know. I thought, yeah, again, if he had stayed on script, he might have had a better chance. Uh, please tell me you've seen Pulp Fiction, Anna. <laughs> all right. <laughs> that's all she needs to say. That's what a generational is it again? thing. I'm Pulp Haynes? Fiction. Yeah, yeah. I, my name is Haynes. My name is Haynes. That's it, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just whatever. You know, these um, kids these days. By the way, Pedro Pascal is going to be Mr. Fantastic, Reed Richards, in the... Uh, um, in the, uh, the, is he really? Fantastic yeah, Fantastic Four. Yep. yep, that was the first one that was announced. Um, just Vanessa announced Kirby as Sue Storm. Janice, uh, Joseph Quinn as Johnny Storm. Don't know who those two people are. Joseph Quinn is from uh, your show, Stranger Things. Stranger Things, yeah. Which one is he? He, uh, I, I don't, hold on. He's the, the the guy who hangs upside down from ceilings in the upside down world. Joseph Ooh. Quinn. I don't know. Is Eddie, that the scary Eddie guy? Munson. Oh, he played Eddie. Yeah, that's him. Oh, He's going to be the uh, okay. the Human Torch. And Eddie then was uh, a, Eddie was a fun character. Cousin from the Bear. He's going to be the thing. That's right. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. All right. Yeah, everybody's so, cousin in that show. We get the, you, you yeah, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know me. Oh, chef from the Bear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to miss you next week, Zach. Know, you're you're I being I clever. I, next week's going to be rough when you're gone. I missed it. I didn't get it. 
Yeah, basically everybody's chef, everybody's cousin. Oh, I get it. Okay, get it. Now I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you can now buy a life-sized replica of the Megan doll from the Megan movie. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Actually, I do, and I don't want to think about it. We'll yeah. ask him on Ooh. Tuesday. <laughs> oh, come on. Or at 9 o'clock. That movie was actually surprisingly really good, though. It, I it's enjoyed pretty freaky. It. Yeah, it I've is I've seen freaky. that movie. I've, I've seen that one. Oh, look at you. You saw Megan and you haven't seen Pulp Fiction? I mean, Meg, didn't that one just come out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Two ago. yeah, yeah. I need to calm down. I'm sorry. I need to <laughs> <clears throat> okay, I a got doll. more stories. Yeah, wow, a doll. Yeah, you could you could buy a a life size uh, version of it if you if you'd like. That seems like the kind of doll you would be into, Chris. One that terrifies you and probably degrades you. I didn't say I didn't already order it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there like a buy one get one free deal, or yeah, yeah it could be. Um, here's something that I would really be interested in doing. In all seriousness, and we're going to London later this year. Um, iconic locations uh, for Britain's royal family will be open to the public for the first time ever this summer. The East Wing of Buckingham Palace and Balmoral Castle in Scotland will both offer tours starting in July. The tour of the palace's East Wing will include a stop in the room where the royals gather before they step out onto the palace's balcony to wave at the public. And the East Wing is uh, being open to the public following more than five years of renovations. Uh, meanwhile, the public will be able to go inside Balmoral Castle for the first time since it was completed in 1855. Hmm. That'd be kind of cool, right? That's sweet, yeah. Is that there. where the queen died? Um... Is this some bear joke that no. we don't get? No, I really don't know. Because I remember, like they, I've they, heard that name a lot. The Bell Moral is the only one. That, like, the only time I ever heard it was when the Queen died. So I'm yeah, assuming, yeah. right? Don't know. I, I, bless I, her heart. Yeah, you, um, thank I mean, you. For, that's so sweet to say that. I mean, bless her heart. Um, I was pretty broken up about it. Hmm. Yeah, it does. Uh, it does say that's where she died when I Google the quick Google search. There you go. Hmm. Have you guys heard of all that conspiracy with Kate Middleton? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was dicey. It, it was a Twitter cesspool for a couple of weeks. Yeah, kind of yeah. weird, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. And everybody had to backtrack once they realized she had cancer. Yeah. It was like, oh, never mind. My bad. Like Blake Lively. Whoops. Never mind. Anna, somebody wants Sorry. to hire you this morning. How can they get a hold of you? You can contact me by email. Uh, it's just my name, Anna Baining23 at gmail.com or Twitter, Anna Baining. Um, send me a message there. Or find me on LinkedIn. It's just my name. B-E-H-N-I-N-G. Yep. We hope uh, it was uh, fun. We already had somebody reach out and want to mentor you. Oh, yeah. Really? His name is Mark Rosen. Mark Rosen. <laughs> yeah, he Twin Cities out. icon would like to take you under his wing. He, he would like to start with a dinner yep. and discuss your career, and then we'll see where it goes from there. Wow. Are you familiar with Mark Rosen? I, I actually met him at the Vikings game when I was interning with Fox 9. <laughs> How'd the, uh, the trial go? Bye. Bye. The trial. We're joking. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. We're just joking. Uh, Anna, it was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you. Uh, the Scalar Brothers tomorrow. Those guys are hilarious. They'll be here about 730, and they're playing initials tomorrow. And $62,500 on the line with the uh, initial jackpot. Thanks to St. Paul Federal Credit Union. 9 to noon is next. See you tomorrow.